I need to start over. I got all jacked up and okay, here we go. <laughs> Yep. Cool. Um, Basically. Is it, do you want to press play and see? No. Yeah, let's see. Okay, let me just get a drink of water first. Yeah. Okay. Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of 62 HP. On this episode, we're gonna take a look at the Pingable Percussion Party Box, which is the name that I've given to this system. Uh, it's comprised mostly of the brand new Super Synthesis modules, which are really budget friendly and functional modules. On the left here, we've got the Fraser, which is a two-channel knob recording, 16-step sequencer. The 2-op FM, we've got two of them, are very versatile two-operator FM percussion voices with built-in envelopes. We've got the VCAR, which is a voltage-controlled attack release generator that can also be a looping LFO with some patch-to-program functionality. We have everybody's favorite polymorphic CV generator, the Ornament and Crime. We're gonna use the Quantizer in there. The Mux Slicer is a really cool sequencer with some sequential switch functionality. To its right, we have a DJ style EQ filter from Super Synthesis. The Milky Way is a fun effects processor. Bunch of different stuff built in there from reverbs, delays, saturations. Cute little 2HP mixer. The Peak up here is another a modulation source, it's based on mutable instruments peaks. And then the guillotine is a distortion filter preamp. We're gonna use it to bring up the volume of the pocket operator and kind of crunch it a little bit, as well as the Korg SQ-1, which is a very fun pocket friendly sequencer that has a lot of really playable functionality and allows you to keep the clock running while the sequencer is stopped, which is really nifty. So we called this system the pingable percussion system because uh, most of the things that receive clocks in this system are actually uh, looking for what is known in the modular ecosystem as a ping. Um, now a ping is slightly different than a uh, clock input. Um, it can be a little hard to wrap your head around, but at the end of the day, what a ping really does is it resets the cycle. Instead of locking a module into a rigid clocking phase, it just resets every time it receives a ping. So what that allows is for a slight amount of shifting and error in the rhythm. To illustrate this, I've got the SQ-1 sending us a straight rhythm here from the 2-op FM. I've also got the Fraser being pinged from the SQ-1 and clocking the Mux Slicer. So let's bring in that rhythm now. It's kind of a syncopated groove feel. And then we can very easily with the Fraser multiply that 
divide it. You can hear that our pinged signal kind of shifts in between the notes in the rigid clocked SQ1 sequence and gives us kind of a more groovy, fun, unpredictable rhythm that we can really easily change on the fly however we feel and create a sort of organic level to our performance. Okay, performance macros. Okay, the other concept we built this system around was the idea of performance macros. Performance macros are an idea that's been in electronic music uh, since DAWs and complex digital sequencers made their way into synthesizers. Basically what a performance macro does is it bundles a bunch of controls and puts them on one knob so you can performatively wail on that knob instead of trying to have four arms and spin everything manually. I've got the Fraser patched up to control most aspects of both of these two op FMs and a little bit of the effects here, so let's take a listen. So as you can see, we can get a ton of control over this system just from this single knob. Performance macros are really useful to quickly alter, tweak, or wiggle anything that you find really exciting in your patch or anything that you really want to highlight during your performance. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Let us know what you'd like to see in a 62 HP system, what you think would be cool, performative, and fun to hear. Make sure to like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Hit the like button. <laughs>